Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be talking about a card game where you're going to be scoring on every single card you play. Today we're going to be talking about scorecards. This is the latest from Mike Fitzgerald, the absolute card game designer master. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Scorecards is an easy to play card game that has lots of depth here. Now what you're trying to do is score with your cards. Every card you play is going to score you some points, hopefully. And essentially you're just going to play a card and then draw your card and refill up your hand. So I've got some cards laid out here to show you how some of these cards would score. Now typically when you play a card, you're going to score for how, what the card is that you've played and you're going to be looking at and making groups of cards. Now there'll be cards in front of you, maybe that you played earlier. There'll be cards in front of your opponent that they have played. There'll also be a starter card sort of like in a discard pile that you'll also be able to make into groups. I've just placed cards here just to kind of show you the different things. And again, if I play a card like this, we look at all the cards out there and we could say, score the highest number on a red card. Great, that card was already played. I get nine points. Maybe I played this earlier because I wanted to set myself up for this because I knew I had this card. This one will get you four points for each card in a group of green even numbers. So boom, boom, there's eight points total. This one, if there's more even numbers than odd numbers. Now here we have three evens, there's two odds, so eight points. This one scored three points for each card in a run of one or more. Six, seven, eight, nine. That's four cards in a run. And four times three, that's 12 points. Score five points and an additional five if this was played after, right after a red. Well, it wasn't when it was played, but it did get five points. So that's how the different cards score. They score in all different unique ways. So let's show you how you actually do this. I'm gonna show you how to play a two player game first and then I'll talk about the three and four player game later. There are four rounds in a game and each round is going to have five turns. You're gonna be dealt a hand of cards, five of them, and you're simply going to play a card and draw a card. And after five cards played, it's gonna be the end of the round and we'll score. So let's show you how this works. So at the beginning of the game, not only does each player get five cards, but you'll flip over a top card from the deck. This is the starter card. This also counts as groups that you can make. Remember, you're making groups from the cards you've played, your opponents have played, and the starter card. Now you keep your cards secret. This is my hand of cards, it's in your hand. No one else could see it, but I placed them here so you could see. Here's my starting hand. So what you're trying to do is figuring out what's the best thing to play now, but also sometimes playing something now that might not score you a whole lot of points, trying to set yourself up for the big play later because you're gonna be rewarded for not only having the most points at the end of the round, but also for having the best single play of the round. So you could even do well just scoring the best play because a lot of times you might end up having the best points at the end because of it too. So let's look at these. So here's my opening hand. I could play this. This says four points for each card in a group that numbers total 10. Well, obviously it's not gonna happen now because when I played this, 10 plus one would be 11, that wouldn't happen. Uh, and because there's only two, there would only be two cards out there, but this one I want to save for later. And as I'm thinking later, I might want to start, uh, you know, looking at cards out there that might add up to 10 uh, and, and, and it's, for each card. So you're, if you can get a lot of cards that have low numbers that add up to 10, which I've done before, you can get a lot of points at this card. So this is gonna be great adding up for 10, or better, even better if you do it with a lot of low cards, because you're getting four points per card. This one, four points for each card in a group of all green odd numbers. Well, this wouldn't be great to play now, because I just get four points for it. Wouldn't be terrible, wouldn't be a bad first play of the round, actually, but let's look at these other ones. If there are more even numbers than odd numbers, score eight points. This is a great one to play at first, because this one's even, this would be the only other card, and I would get eight points. That's a really good first play, actually. Now this one here, score five points. In addition, change the number of any one card on your next play. That would be great. Four points for each card in a group of all tens. There's a 10 here, there's a 10 here. You might say, well, why don't I play this? This would get me eight points as well, because there's two of them. Well, because later on, I can try to hold this to my last card of the round, or even hold it to the next round if it's not looking good, but I can hold this and try to draw more tens or see if the other player plays more tens because this will be worth more towards the end of the game. So you're thinking short-term and long-term strategy as you go. So I decided to play this one. It goes out in front of me. Again, I've made this group here. There's, the, uh, there's more uh, even than odds. So I would get eight points. I'd mark that down on the score sheet. Then it'd be the opponent's turn. So let's say the opponent goes, oh good, I got an opportunity. This game's all about finding the opportunities. This player plays this. Score the last number on the last card played. Eight points. This player also just got eight points for playing that green one. And they're like, touche. But then you're like, oh, okay, well then maybe I'll play this one now. This one says four points for each card in a group of all green odd numbers. Green, green, odd, odd. 
Four points for each. Now I got eight points again. You go back and forth like this, setting yourself up, sometimes changing on a whim, sometimes looking for long-term strategy, and you keep doing this until each of you have all played five cards. Now here's another interesting aspect of the game and some strategy is that as you're playing, again, you're trying to set yourself up for things, but some of them might not come to fruition. Uh, for example, I really wanted to play this one, and there were some cards out there I could have told it to 10, but it was only, they were all sort of, you know, there were bigger numbers and I wasn't able to do it. You really want to use this one when you have a bunch of low numbers because it's four points per card. And I've seen this one score a ton. The opportunity wasn't great enough, so I didn't play this card. Why? Because the cards that you haven't played, you get to carry over to next round. So you're also thinking for future, which ones are great for this round, which ones do I want to try to save for next round. So even though the game's light, there's definitely a lot of depth here. So the interesting thing is, as you go through each turn, you're putting your scores for each of the cards one at a time. And at the end of the first round, at the end of five turns, you will circle the highest score for that round. Again, that player gets a point for that. Then you'd add up all five of your points and you'd whoever got more would get a point. So in this case, uh, Greg got both of them. They got the highest one and one just by one point. And so they got both points that are available. They got two points. Now let's look at how this game played out. The next round, Greg also got the highest points, 16, and had the highest total points. We so got another two points. He's beating me four to nothing after the second round. That's terrible, because the only thing I can hope for is to do the same thing to him, sweep both next rounds, and win the tiebreaker. Third round, I got the highest points, 20 in a single round, and the highest overall points. So I scored both points, too. Here... I won the most points for the round, but I did not. We tied 12 to 12 for the highest single round, so nobody got it. If I had gotten just 13 or more on one of them, I would have gotten two, I would have tied them, and then it would have went to total scores for all the round. I would have beat them in the tiebreaker. So it came down to literally one number, even though I was looking like I was about to be swept. The game's great. Now, the three-player game it has a captain. Now, so we have three hands here, three players. We always have the, the starter card. And it's only played over three rounds. Each round, one player will be the captain. Let's say it's this player here. Now, this is interesting because when they play, they, when they play a card down, they are making a group from the cards that they have played and the starting card, and they get to choose which of the other two players display they want to group with theirs. And it can change per card. They might play a card and say, hey, this, this group's better with this player's cards. Next card, this player plays better with this player's cards. So they get to do it. Now, when the other players are playing, they're grouping their own with the captain, and of course, with the, thing, uh, with the starting card. So it's very interesting how this changes each of the rounds. Also, when scoring, the captain for each player that they have scored more than, they get a point. And for each player they've scored the higher of all the rounds, like, like the single highest round, gets it. Where these players only score if they've beaten the captain in either of the two normal ways. So it's a very interesting way where you can have a very big score on your captain hand, but you only get that once per game, but everybody gets it once and it's even in balance and it makes it very interesting for both taking, you know, playing the cards and the scoring. Now in a four players, you can play a four player round robin sort of tournament setting where you play each of the other players twice and whoever the highest points in the end wins. Or you can play with a partnership variant, which I love. Now in this variant, you are the partners with the person sitting across from you. And at the beginning of the game, you get to give two cards to your partner and they're giving two cards to you. You're looking at them and then you're giving two back. Could be some of the ones that you, they just gave you, could be both of them, could be completely different ones. So you're giving each other cards and some information about what they might be trying to set you up for or vice versa. Then, there's a turn marker that will go in front of each player. It's this player's turn. Now, when it's this player's turn, either player from that team can play a card. They can discuss who should play, but they can't discuss how many points they'd score or which cards they have in their hand. So it's some limited communication. But either one, someone will go, oh, I got a good, I, I can really score well. This one's like, no, 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 I can, I, I, I'm going to be able to score better than you. And it becomes this interesting game, kind of like the mind or, or the game where there's some limited communication, but you're working together. So either player can play. It gets to this player, either of these two players can play. Now, once per game, uh, per round, uh, when it gets to somebody, they can do a pass. And so they would pass a card to their, their partner and their partner will pass the card back. It could be the same one. But this limited communication, you still play uh, four rounds, you're still playing five cards, but the limited communication and allowing either player to play is amazing because you can set each other up, you can think you're doing, it's just, it adds another layer of depth to the game. All right, now before I get to my final thoughts, I wanna let you know that if you like my content, there's now ways to get bonus content like first impression videos well before a review will come out or for many games I don't even end up reviewing. You can even vote for which games get reviewed on the channel. You can also see me opening up packages and getting content earlier than everyone else. Well, if you like that, you can check it out at patreon.com slash gameboygeek. 
I first want to say that this is an early copy of the game. This actually isn't even the final version. Uh, they are going to be pre-releasing and showing some, and actually I think even selling some early copies of this at Dice Tower West, which is just a couple weeks from now. I will be there. Mike Fitzgerald will be there. Um, and, and so they have sort of a little pre-launch party where you can get the game and play the game. But the real release is going to be later in the summer. So I just wanted to, to preface that here. This for me, and, and just prefacing this, Mike Fitzgerald's one of my favorite game designers. He has designed my favorite game of all time, Baseball Highlights for 2045, but he's done a ton of mystery rummies and just diamonds and di faux diamonds. And he has done a ton of uh, games that I love and he's one of my favorite designers. So he tends to design things that are very streamlined, but you have a lot of depth and this has that. This is like a, this has like a modern card game. It's designed today, 2023 but it has a classic card game feel. And it feels like a comforting game that may have been around for ages. It really does. Now I know this game was originally inspired by Cribbage and I know it's kind of through its years of development have kind of moved further away from that, but that's maybe why it has that classic feel. But for me, it's like, oh yeah, this could have been made 50, 100, 200 years ago. And I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. But it, it wasn't. Um, this is the style of game that I feel should be like in every big box store. This is the style of game that you want people to be able to walk in, see on a shelf, have it be at a price point that's an impulse price, and have them be able to buy it and take it home. And whether they don't play anything but Uno or whether they are true game, like gamer enthusiasts, you're, you're, you're both going to like it and enjoy it. The, 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 you know, the, the, the Uno player can play this and throw cards down and not have to think and not have to do forward planning and planning for other rounds, this and that, and they'll have a good time. And other players are going to be thinking at a different level and a deeper level and thinking forward and all this stuff whilst at the same time thinking here. And they're going to like it too. This game is simple mechanisms, but a lot to think about. I like that. The game, usually games are tactical or strategic. Tactical meaning I'm adapting. What's the best thing I can do right now? Planning is what am I doing now for my end game goal? What am I trying to achieve? This game has both of those, and I love that. The fact that the display is building with every card that you play or any of the opponents play, your decision tree expands. Every new card that comes on the table changes what you might do, which is really cool because you can be like, hey, I had this card. It wasn't great now. I'm purposely holding this for later, but look at that. They played this. They played this. I'm going to play this. Next round, I'll play this. If more than ones come out, there's going to be better. Like, it's really cool, but then you can also be like strategic playing where it's like, Early in the round, you're like, I'm going to hold this card. This, if I play this, it's going to be the last card in the round. I'm going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to try to build this up. Sometimes you'll know that you are uh, not going to win the round. And you're like, well, I'm going to hold back all these cards for next round, right? Because you get to decide, you know, you, get, you keep the cards. It's really cool. The scoring in the game is just brilliant. It's like, okay, you're going to score. There's only two points per round you can get. One of them is for having the highest total points. And the other one is for having the highest total score, like the, the, the single score in the round. I think that's brilliant because it's like sometimes you're like you could just hold back and get a bunch of zeros who cares right to just set yourself up for this one big play and at best you're going to score one point which is like 50 percent of the scoring in the round right um it's just really interesting how you can shoot for those goals there i mean you could clobber the other person in points but if they had one really good play that they set themselves up you're basically tied at the end of that round it's really clever. For a game that's so simple, there's so much to think about, so many dynamics, and what to play when, and what, it's, it's really good. That scoring just ratchets up why this game is so great. Um, the three player, so a three player game is really good. One's the captain, they're able to score against the other two players, they have this like huge possible round, but in the other two rounds, the other players are the captains. And they get to have a huge round. And you're still just fighting against only that captain. It's just really interesting. It's a way to make a game that was like originally designed for two players. It works great with three. And the four player. Sure, you can play the round robin single. I like the partnership better. The partnership is really good. And what takes this to a different level is the fact that when it's your turn, not only are you passing cards at the beginning and, hey, sending them cards and showing them what you want them to set them up for, lots of, like, lots of things. If you like partnership card games, it's great. And then during the game, during the round, you can pass one. One type around, you can pass one uh, to your teammate. But the communication where either player can play a card and the, the limited communication where you're trying to like dance around who should play the card right now. I, can, I got a really good score. No, I can play it. I think I could beat that. And you're doing this thing and he throws a card. You're like, what? Eight? You thought eight was great? Oh man, you saved the last, you know, that was our last card. You know, stuff like that. It's, it's really great. So it works 
two, three, and four players. It's awesome. Uh, no game's perfect. This one isn't either. Um, the only minor quibble I have is the graphic design. Um, there's text all on the cards, which you read, it's fine. Um, but the top half of the cards has this some part of graphic design where like pyram uh, you know, pyramids mean one thing and spe spheres kind of mean something else in general. But they don't really tell you what the card does. They don't, they're not really that helpful. Um, and they're not that great to look at either. I like the colors. I like the classic design. I would like to see them do something like actually put some iconography on the top half of the cards that actually tell you what the text does. So when you're looking at the card, you, it, you, you can look at that card, you don't even have to really read the English after you've played it once. You just look at the icon, you're like, I get what this one does. It would open it up for international markets and things like that. Anyway, that's my only minor cribble. Graphic design can be improved. It could be a better game because of it. But even without that, this is a fantastic game. This is the style of game that I can play with gamers, non-gamers, and because of all that, and because of just the way the scoring works and everything, this is a great, great game. Uh, and for that, it's getting my highest honor, which is a saxophone serenade, which means I'm going to have to figure out which game is getting removed once this thing moves past the new arrival shelf in the gaming library. This has been a Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, by helping you find the next one you love. Let's hit it. <laughs> Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a Game Topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.